Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside Interviews. Uh, I'm here today in the plateau area of downtown, around downtown Montreal. We're here at Station Host with the head brewer and owner of Hopfenstark. Fred, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for hosting us today. I really appreciate it. So uh, what's the story of Hopfenstark? Oh, Hopfenstark uh, started like in uh, 2006. First, we've tried to open like in 2004. That was really complicated at the time. Like nobody knew what is a microbrewery, like at the bank or the city or whatever. Then we had the spot like in uh, L'Assomption. Then we opened a brewery in L'Assomption in 2006. And we've started like uh, right away to do uh, many styles as a classic uh, German style, as the uh, Ostelische Blonde, it's a kind of Kölsch, mm -hmm. German inspiration. Uh, hot beer or like the post-colonial IP, it's a classic like a, a hybrid style of uh, English IPA and American hops, English uh, American uh, IPA, and classical saison, a uh, beautiful style from Belgium. And we've started like in March 2007 to do uh, sour beer and barrel aging stuff. Then mm -hmm. that was a long time ago before like the trend. Yeah. Excellent. And since then, like we try to push a little bit the limits of uh, the beer, like creativity without like being kind of cheesy, <laughs> uh, adding some stuff to the beer. Like it's not really like uh, the kind of stuff we'd like to do. Uh, more about like creativity with like the uh, the mulled hops and the yeast. Mm -hmm. And just like the Boson de Higgs, it's a Berliner Rausch saison. We are doing that beer since 2010, almost 10 years now. And it's a uh, low gravity wheat beer, saison yeast, smoke malt, 3.8% uh, of alcohol, like, like pushing the limits a bit more like that way. Okay. And what brought you to downtown? What brought you to open a brew pub here in, in Montreal, uh, coming from La Santillon? <laughs> Yeah, like since the beginning, we were looking at places like in Montreal, trying to open like a bar, like a brew pub. And uh, it took several years. We had so many other things to do. Like when you're brewing, there's a lot of stuff to do. Then we found the spot like in 2012 and we opened a place in August 2013, uh, selling our stuff. Uh, selling like a really uh, specialized in partition as uh, Dry Fontaine and Tilke, um sour beer like uh, helping the people like to discover a little bit more the sour uh, sour beer because we're doing a lot of them and we're doing like a um, sour night every year for the uh, while it's the Mozart de la Bière in Montreal yes. uh, since 2013 then uh, we push a little bit more like on the sour side but we like to have a beautiful menu like really uh, with a lot of different style not only one style as today the trend is IPA mm -hmm. And but like what we are trying to do is to have like many different styles. Then everybody is able to pick what they want. Okay, excellent. Uh, where does the name Hopfen start come from? Uh, the the idea was uh, to push a little bit more than like what we see like normally like in a, in a province. Like everyone have uh, got a name uh, with a relationship with the religion, and we're supposed to be like out of this time like it, we're supposed to be like uh, don't believe in god anymore but <laughs> okay. but we still have name of breweries on uh in relationship with the god the devil the yeah. religion mm -hmm. then that it was to f have a name like inter more international and out of this mentality in your relationship with the religion then in german hopfen means hops and okay. stark means strong then it's in german you can put word together mm -hmm. And Hopfenstark is the creation of that world, like strong hops, stronger hops, and also the uh, HO from Hopfen and ST from Stark. It's host, just like Host Brewery or Station Host. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That's great to hear. Where does the uh, creativity of the names come? Like uh, Laser Logger, uh, Boson, well, Higgs Boson in English. It's Boson to Higgs in, in, yeah. in French. But where does the uh, creativity with the names and the labeling come from? Like every time we're doing a beer, like we are trying to bring something from the area, geographic area of the beer, and bring also something from the history around like the beer or the time. Just like uh, it's a uh, Kölsch, like uh, the um, Astrologia Blonde, uh, Dolgo, it's the Ampelman from East uh, Germany. Mm -hmm. Then, like, uh, and Ostalgia, it's a movement from uh, nostalgic from the East Germany. Ost mean East in German. Then remove, they remove the N from Nostalgia, mm -hmm. and it's Ostalgia. Okay. 
And uh, in the meantime, uh, Ostalgia, in that, in that case, like on the website, we are suggesting movies around like the name and just like Goodbye Lenin. Typical, okay, okay. like with the style, like mm -hmm. it's German movie. It's a nostalgia. It's uh, from uh, East uh, Europe. Uh, we also have suggestion of books like Kundera, uh, that kind of stuff that fit perfectly with that style. And every time we are like creating like a beer, we are trying to figure out something around the style, uh, the area in the world, just like the Lulu Porter is a classic Porter. But uh, we are uh, we have on the label like Louise Brooks. Mm -hmm. It's English Porter. Louise Brooks was an actress in cinema uh, in the 20s, like uh, black and white movies. And uh, she's from England. Then it's in the same time as the Porter was more trendy in England. Then we are trying like to bring at the same time the beer, history, geographic fact, and put them together. Okay. And uh, it was not eggs. It's like something new in 2009 2010 the trend was uh russian beer style barley wine that kind of stuff really strong beer then we came with a low gravity beer out of the blue something totally different then it's something new before the trend then the boson de eggs was and they, they were about to discover the boson de eggs okay at the CERN. then that, that's why we have named it that way okay okay uh what are some difficulties you run into with uh just in quebec creating the hop and start brand first like the people, like, in 2006, 2007, 8, 9, uh, we were doing sour stuff, sour beer, barrel-aged sour beer. Then nobody want to buy your stuff. In 2009, we did the official beer of the Mondial de mm -hmm. came out with uh, Berliner Weisse. And nobody knew what is a Berliner Weisse at the time. Then we sold only one keg in province in 2009. Then in 2010, we did it again. And we sold two keg in the province. <laughs> but in the meantime, in 2007, 8, 9, 10, we were selling a lot of our sour beer in the States. Mm -hmm. And in 2010, 50% uh, of the production were going directly to the States because they were ready to drink sour beer, barrel-aged sour beer, and like a Russian pearl stout, aged in bourbon barrel, and that kind of stuff. And now, like it's in 2013, we opened the place here. We had like beautiful events, beautiful mm -hmm. moments here. But now, like the trend is is more like on high PA. Yeah, and uh, we let that thing happen. But we're not going in that direction. We okay. continue to do our sour beer, but like low gravity stuff, mm -hmm. beautiful lager, like the Hellas. Mm -hmm. This is what we want a little bit more to do. And we are we continue to sell in the states a lot of the Boson de eggs. Uh, we used to brew those two beers directly in Boston for the U.S. market. Okay. That was a lot easier, but we moved the brewery like about uh, one year ago. Mm -hmm. And now we bring back all the production like in the province and selling directly to the States from the new brewery, the new facility. Yeah, I mean, the, your brewery, from what I understand, is roughly about an hour from downtown Montreal. So yeah, it's yeah, not like too uh, far. 40, 45 minutes yeah. from here. Yeah, yeah. it's Laval Tree, uh, if you're yeah. about there. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned the U.S. Uh, would you like to get in other provinces in Canada? I know there's we, uh, a lot of <coughs> difficulty with that. So. We used to sell a bit in Ontario, mm -hmm. but like, like I said, like since we opened the place here in 2013, like 75 to 80 percent of the production were coming directly to the bar. Mm -hmm. Then that's why we have disappeared from the shelf, like the stores, and everywhere else in the province. And we almost stopped the production, like the the, the sales, like for the. Um, uh, U.S. market and same for the Europe because we are selling in Europe also. We were not able like to produce enough for the outside market, that including like Ontario. Mm -hmm. And we have like demands for like BC, Alberta, and whatever, but we can't. Okay. We just can't. It's, it's all and, selling here, and, uh, and like <laughs> and that used like to be seventy-five to eighty percent of the production coming to the bar, to the bar. Mm -hmm. But like with the new facility, the new brewery, like we are back in cans, just like those two first. And like yeah, after Christmas, like we will have like a lot of products coming in can like for the next year or two years. Excellent. Yeah, it's always so you're gonna be competing with other beers on the shelf, obviously. For yes, but we don't want to have a big production again. Yeah. We increase the capacity, but like not a lot. Okay. We don't want to do a mass production. Then that way, like that will be uh, more like um, uh, we'll be back on the shelf, but mm -hmm. not everywhere. Only like a really specialized spot. Okay, so and like Experience Bière, Experience Bière. Mal Malta Hops in Verdun, places like that. Experience Bière, yeah, for sure. And uh, like La Glacière de l'Est, Frigo de Bacchus, uh, Vutu une Bière, Pelouse au Beau, that yeah. kind of really okay. specialized. 
yeah, stuff. yeah. Yeah, it's great that we have these stores too that specialize yeah. in craft beers. But uh, we've mentioned the IGAs are actually getting really good with craft beer yeah, too. Yeah, more and so more. Yeah. That's, uh, we love that as as a show. As we get together on a monthly basis, we try new beers and just go to IGA, <laughs> buy some new beers that you never tried before. Yeah, so have you uh, done any collaborations? I did some, but we didn't have enough time, especially like since we opened the bar here, we've got to run like the, the pub plus the brewery. Moving the brewery in the last few years, that was totally crazy. <laughs> Uh, but now we are back like with collaboration, like many people asked to do a collaboration and uh, we will be back for next year. I will have like a couple of collaboration. I, we talk with example, like Freigeist uh, in Germany, Thierry like in, uh, in France and um, Sean Hill asked for a collaboration since the beginning, but I don't have time. <laughs> like that kind of stuff, like it's uh, Lawson talk about mm -hmm. collaboration and like many people like that, but time so sean hill from hill farmstead correct yep okay if you were to pick three uh let's say one in quebec one elsewhere in canada and one in the states who would you if you had the time collaborate with it's hard really hard mm -hmm. question like in the states depend like if i would love to do a collaboration example with jolly pumpkin okay Rum. it's yep. like i love his beer when i've tried his old calabaza this is where like it popped in my head like a beautiful sour clean beer that was amazing uh sean Hill also really nice to do something with him for sure like we talk about many beer we will be able to do and create like it's yeah that can be fun Thierry, really good stuff i like what he's doing like in europe mm -hmm. really nice guy the rank is amazing also i love the rank what they are doing Godspeed, like in uh, Ontario, really nice beer, like in the multi side that can be really nice to do something with uh, BIM. Okay. Like on that side, like totally different world. Yeah. Like, like like you saw, like it's it's uh, something sour, mm -hmm. like a Jolly Pumpkin with his world, like in, in his barrel, then multi. And it's just a bit what we're doing. We're doing like, we have different styles. Like Thierry is more like a Saison, the French Saison mm -hmm. is his yeast. And it's more like... All those styles we are doing, like uh, more multi, like uh, creations, uh, saison, like it's different style and a different kind of collaboration. Awesome. Uh, so you're a brewer. What was your first beer uh, that you brewed at, at home brewing or home brewing? Yeah, that one. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, so and that came to the shelves. That's great to see too. So well, uh, we used to brew like something like six, seven different beer, like uh, between two to five times a week. Oh. All the way is the same beer and changing only one details, like the hops, the temperature, the yeast, uh, the malt, and like taking that in notes, all those information. Then after, you know, uh, every parameter is like the way they are acting mm -hmm. in beer. And you just scale it up from home to Yeah, after, yeah. Yeah. Those three beer used to be like uh, uh, on brewing, mm -hmm. like when I was on brewing. Okay. Uh, if somebody were uh, a regular macro drinker and they were to come here, what would you suggest they try first? Depending on what you like. Yeah. What do you want? Okay. So um, somebody comes in and I like sour candy. What do you do? What do you give them? Uh, we go for sure something like uh, the Ostel Chablon can be really nice. What is the most difficult thing to achieve mm -hmm. is to create a beer like... People who don't know beer and drinker, beer drinker of microbreweries would love. And people who know beer mm -hmm. will love also. Okay. And this is one of the, the beer like that achieve both thing. Like people who don't know beer love the, uh, really like the Astral Chabon and people who know beer really love the multi side and like the, uh, the spiciness from the hops as the, of the Astral Chablon. Then... This is like the thing, like unidimensional beer is like easier to achieve, mm -hmm. but like a larger spectrum of like people can love your beer, like it's a lot more difficult. I mean, like your raspberry, I, we're filming during the winter, but to me, this is a great summer beer where I'm sitting on it your is. terrace when it's, when it's there during the summer and just ha having a couple of beers. Yeah, drinkability, nice. like yeah. it's really important to have drinkability in your products. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, make it easier, like, to tr drink many pints, like, printable yes. beer. And it's, uh, like, uh, make it dry, no diacetyl, like, no off flavors in it, like, and really easy, like, with a lot of flavor at the same time. Yeah, I like this. But, it's, it, I get a little bit of raspberry, it's a little bit of tartness, which I enjoy, yeah. so it's a very good beer. Um, and I see you have a few, few new ones that I hadn't seen before. Laser lager, I, is that pretty new, or? Uh, the laser lager is not us. Oh, okay. It's UDCL. 
Oh, okay. And we've got guest tap here. Okay, that's nice. So you guys kind of get together and have yeah. guest taps, which is great to hear, especially somebody who wants to do a, a kind of a brewery experience in one shot, yeah. just come here. Yeah, exactly. Like we've got, uh, like we've got twenty-five draft in one cask, and normally we have like a five, six uh, beer from the outside, one private importation from Europe or from the states. Well, the rest of the products is us uh, in draft, and we've got like a bottle, like a uh, dry from and mm -hmm. bottle, the uh, Boone, uh, uh, good stuff like that. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, I like to hear that you you guys are all kind of get together and uh, oh well, I'll support you and maybe. Oh, it's logical. Me, so. Complementarity of products. Yeah. It's cool to have that. That's awesome. So I'm assuming you've been on beer vacations before. What's one that you've never done that you'd like to do in the future? Uh, there's many, many uh, small countries in Czech Republic or Germany, like small like village with like a, a brewery. They are doing the the style as they are like since maybe like uh, 100 years. Yeah. And I, I would be curious to try those in those little village, those small breweries, to have a direct like point of view of the way they are like making those beer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know uh, we've talked as a show we want to do to Munich for Oktoberfest this year. Uh, and my plan with my video videographer, Phil, is uh, we're going to go to Belgium after and, and try and get into a monastery and have beer mm -hmm. from the monastery because that's just always interested us. It's like from the source, from yeah, the guys yeah. who started brewing like in the modern age when you think about it. So yeah. we've always wanted to do that. Excellent. So give everybody how they can contact you, your social, your address. Let everybody know where they can find you. Like uh, we've got like a location like in Montreal, mm -hmm. Station House. It's uh, 1494 Ontario Street. And like there is a Facebook and a website. Uh, stationhouse.ca is a website. And we've got like the brewery. The brewery is just outside of Montreal. It's in Lavaltrie, uh, between like uh, Montreal and Trois Rivières on the Highway 40. And we will open really soon, like a tasting room. Okay, tap room. Awesome. That's yeah. that's good to hear. And it's like a bottle to get can to go specialized, really, really specialized stuff. Will be uh, uh, people will be able to pick them, uh, like a um, camarade, uh, Russian pure stout, aged in bourbon barrel, five years, that kind of stuff. All the sour world, like we've got on site only. Then people will be able like to get the beer directly at the brewery at uh, 1970 Notre Dame Street, on Chemin du Roi, le Notre Dame Street. Excellent. Then that's both location. And you can find up French Shark also like on the website or Facebook. Okay. So we're going to add all that in the show notes. Um, as for us, allbeerinside.com, add all beer inside everywhere. And as we remind you, drink craft, not crap. Thank you very much. Thanks. Very much appreciate it.